Hello, welcome to the Tesla Jigsaw. I'm Will. With EV pioneers Tesla and low-cost BYD both dominating car sales in China, Volkswagen is facing tough competition from all electrified angles. I want to highlight a few major issues, not just on the horizon for Volkswagen, but right on their doorstep, and certainly challenge the narrative that the mainstream media keeps spewing. Volkswagen will surpass Tesla EV sales by 2024? No, it won't, you donut. Volkswagen delivered 330,000 EVs in 2022, whilst Tesla delivered 1.3 million. And looking at this week's news, Volkswagen are slowing down their electrification plans. Volkswagen is to cut electric car production in Germany due to strong consumer reluctance as demand for battery vehicles slumps. Yeah, right. Let me translate that for you. Volkswagen to cut electric car production in Germany due to our cars being a bit rubbish as demand for battery vehicles continues to grow for everyone who makes compelling or price competitive EVs. There, fixed it. So Volkswagen company executives say demand for its all-electric models is down 30% on forecasts, so are cutting their German production by 30% and managing to blame it beautifully on consumers, us lot, for having a lack of interest in Volkswagen's EV offerings. Don't for a moment, dear Volkswagen, consider that you are producing subpar, very expensive, heavy, slow, riddled with software glitches and generally not very appealing cars when weighed up against any competitors. Don't even question that. But let's start at the beginning, shall we? The ID3 was the first of Volkswagen's ID lineup, which now includes the ID4, ID5, ID6, only in China, and possibly the ID7, although that was due to go into production about now, but apparently is now on hold until the end of the year. They are all built on Volkswagen's purpose-built MEB platform. The most anticipated ID3 entered the European market in 2020, and soon after became a top seller before arriving in China in late 2021. The Chinese-made version of the ID3 is pretty much the same as the German-built one, with the only noticeable differences being a a slightly smaller 57 kWh battery pack, which gives the ID3 a real-world range of about 170 miles, and b a ludicrously cheaper price tag. More on that later. It has a rear electric motor that provides up to 170 horsepower and is built in Volkswagen's new factory in Shanghai. A few quick awkward comparisons of an ID3 to a Tesla Model 3, which weighs a lot less, has far better performance, offers more range despite having a way smaller battery pack. These things equate to better efficiency, cheaper running costs, quicker charging times, and overall, better everything. For roughly 15% more money, a Tesla simply offers far better value when weighing up all the details. Let's quickly mention knackers. Car companies are switching to Tesla's North American charging standard, NACS. The NAX plug is smaller and more compact and offers seamless access to Tesla's growing supercharger network, the most reliable and established on the planet. Many car companies have now agreed to use Tesla's style of charging port on their cars. Ford, General Motors, Rivian, Volvo, Polestar, Mercedes... Who am I missing from this list of world-leading car companies? Oh yes, it's Volkswagen, who are yet again a little slow with their decision-making here. Could Volkswagen really end up being the only car company in the world not able to use Tesla's enormous global supercharger network? Of course not. They will eventually partner with Tesla too and make that connection. <coughs> Unless, of course, they are happy with their own dedicated worldwide supercharger network for Volkswagen vehicles. Oh, that's right, there isn't one. Well, there sort of is one in America. A lawsuit compelled Volkswagen to spend $2 billion on the Electrify America charging network, which by most accounts is dreadful. And I'm afraid I can't discuss Volkswagen without bringing up Dieselgate, which has so far cost the Volkswagen Group $35 billion in vehicle refits, fines and legal costs. This came about due to Volkswagen fitting defeat devices, which cheated federal emissions tests. This was deliberately installed software which would alter the toxic pollution coming out of an exhaust, as the cars knew they were in emissions testing mode. Volkswagen knowingly produced cars that were emitting up to 40 times, not 40%, 40 times more pollutants into the air that we breathe. Absolutely disgraceful. Are we to assume that all 200 Volkswagen executives learned from their past mistakes? No. Four years later, a German court revealed that Volkswagen's fix for the diesel cheating devices contains another cheat device. You couldn't make this stuff up, could you? And how about this? 
Volkswagen emissions cheating was an open secret for seven years, says Volvo executive. Well, did he not think of telling anyone, Mr Volvo? I'd happily rat out my competitor if I knew they were knowingly causing harm to children's lungs with their 11 million supersized extra polluty emissions cheating vehicles on the roads. Oh, but it wasn't just Volkswagen cheating emission tests, was it? Fiat Chrysler, Jeep, Opel, Nissan, Renault, Mercedes-Benz, Seat, Skoda, Audi and Porsche were all complicit, which mostly happened to be owned by the Volkswagen Group. So pardon my action when I say <laughs> to Volkswagen. You've screwed over your customers for long enough and I'll happily watch you go bankrupt. The people I feel sorry for are the workers that will lose their jobs thanks to your corruption, incompetence, inadequate products and the reluctancy to move sincerely towards EVs with the urgency required. I really do believe at this point that Volkswagen are offering too little too late. Which is a lovely segue to recommend a video I did a while ago about Volkswagen's upcoming ID2. Well, unless they cancel that project, of course, they might well do at this rate. Card in the corner if you want to go and see that. But don't go just yet. You can click it at the end. Where did it all go wrong? The problem Volkswagen had when creating their first mass market electric vehicle was that Volkswagen is not a software company. It does not personally make its own software, as Tesla does. And when outsourcing the software to a third party company, it provided what I and many others would describe as unacceptable software and a user interface to run their cars. In fact, it's gotten so bad for the Volkswagen Group that they are about to dismiss almost the entire board of its software subsidiary, Cariad, which has been plagued with problems from the start. Couple that with no experience in making electric drivetrains, no experience of battery technology, charging capabilities, and all other brand new technologies that are very necessary to make compelling electric cars. It matters not if you are a car company that makes super high quality cars, engines, and nice sounding closey doors, the rude wake-up call is, the products you make are becoming obsolete. And if you want to survive, you need to throw away everything you know and start all over again. This uncomfortably includes 136 production facilities that Volkswagen has around the world dedicated to building engines. You know, those things that are soon to be extinct. This is not something that legacy automakers want to face up to, but face up to it, they must. If, of course, they want to survive. Instead of creating excellent electric cars immediately, Volkswagen had to necessarily start at the beginning, just like Tesla did almost 20 years ago, and try to figure out how to build a compelling, competitive, well-performing electric car. As you'd expect, Volkswagen rushed out subpar products with the ID3 and ID4 at a price point that was not only barely profitable for them, but also way too expensive for what it offered. And if you have a mediocre product, people will notice. When Sandy Monroe first test drove the ID4, he said it's a great car for a taxi driver. Hardly revolutionary then. And when Elon Musk took it for a spin with former Volkswagen CEO Herbert Diess, the best he could come up with was, I think for a non-sporty car it's pretty good. A bit awkward then. Not only do traditional car companies need to make compelling EVs that are at least on par with what Tesla and the Chinese are offering, but also scale production fast, whilst, of course, watching their internal combustion engine business collapse, which is their bread and butter. Whichever way you look at it, these problems are not easy to overcome and could easily spell the end for most legacy car makers. Let's look at Chinese-made Volkswagens. If you are a car company that wants to sell cars in China, you have to have a joint venture partner who builds them for you, which is SAIC, S-A-I-C, a Chinese state-owned company that owns 50% of Volkswagen in China. There is one exception to this rule, of course, Tesla. Tesla opened the first wholly foreign-owned car factory in China in 2019, after Beijing eased ownership restrictions to increase competition and speed up industry development. Tesla was allowed to enter the Chinese market as it brought value to the Chinese EV industry, like Apple and the consumer electronics market. Tesla China workers could gain knowledge and share it around the Chinese EV industry. For some reason, the word plagiarise comes to mind. No, surely not. Tesla Gigafactory in Shanghai started production in 2019, and by 2022, it had become the most giant electric vehicle factory in the world. Within three years of the groundbreaking ceremony, Tesla's China factory has already surpassed an annual production rate of over 1 million vehicles. Just building the thing broke records. Construction workers built the entire factory in just 168 working days for just 2 billion. 
I say just 2 billion as Volkswagen are about to borrow 200 billion to focus on EVs. I have a feeling that Tesla will be far more frugal with their actual cash on hand of $22.5 billion than Volkswagen's extreme approach of borrowing on top of what is already an enormous mountain of debt. Just over $387 billion of debt now. That's over a third of a trillion dollars. Now yes, I know that includes people's car loans, but not that much of it. And the question remains, how many decades would need to go by before Volkswagen pays off its ballooning debt? Or might it go bankrupt a little sooner? Then who foots the bill, dear Germans? Chinese car manufacturers have the ability to seriously undercut worldwide competitors in just the same way that Japanese manufacturers flooded the market with cheap and cheerful, reliable, affordable cars and motorbikes back in the 1970s. China is already disrupting the car market around the world and not many car manufacturers seem to be taking this very seriously. It's worth noting though just how many car companies are already owned by the Chinese. Did you know that Volvo and Polestar is now China owned? How about MG? Yes, that lovely Britishness springs to my mind too, but not anymore. China owned. Then there's Lotus. Yes, that very chassis for the original Tesla Roadster, borrowed from the Lotus Elise. Thanks former British Lotus workers. But again, now all belongs to China. China's EV market is the most vibrant globally. More than 94 car brands offer 300 models ranging from five to $90,000. China's car market is rapidly progressing towards electric cars, with one in four car sales now being electric, which is remarkably similar to what we've just found out in the UK as of today, with 25% market share going to plug-in electric vehicles, so it does include hybrids. But non-hybrids, as in full battery electric vehicles, still account for nearly 18% of vehicles in the UK. That's one in five new cars. Who saw that come in? Me! However, Volkswagen's sales have stalled in China. They have fell behind China's BYD in passenger car sales during the first quarter, with demand for lower priced EVs on the rise. To try to keep up with competition and stimulate demand, Volkswagen has slashed the price of its Made in China ID3 to roughly $17,500. That's £13,000. You heard that right, £13,000, which no doubt is selling them at a substantial loss. This is bad. The Chinese market is Volkswagen's largest market, accounting for around 50% of Volkswagen's global sales. Volkswagen usually sells 10 times as many cars in China than it does in the US, for example. Just as Volkswagen are ramping up EV production, their Chinese EV market share is dropping. They have just 2.9% market share in China now, a drop from still a measly 3.2% from last year. In May, Volkswagen delivered a total of 11,300 EVs to Chinese customers, but in comparison, Tesla sold 42,500, whilst BYD sold over 119,000. <whistles> the great VW ripoff. How is it then that Volkswagen can build and sell an ID3 for the equivalent of just £13,000 in China, whilst the European price still sits at £37,000? That's 184% more money for the same product. Yes, labour material costs are cheaper in China, but it seems surely impossible for the cost to be that much higher in Europe. Could it be that Volkswagen is ripping off its European and US customers, desperately trying to cash in on the EV demand? If they cannot make EVs profitable on a per unit basis out of Germany, then it creates an incentive to reduce production, does it not? And doesn't that sit nicely with Volkswagen's narrative? Oh no, people just don't want EVs after all. We'll have to keep selling cars with engines. Just for the time being, until we've worked out how to build better ones at scale. Oh, what a shame. Volkswagen's electric vehicle sales are experiencing a significant decline, potentially due to customers conducting thorough research before purchasing an EV, and concluding that Volkswagen's offerings are not very compelling in terms of pricing. Alternatively, it raises the broader question of whether Volkswagen lacks the necessary talent in the field of EVs altogether. Could it be that Volkswagen might become the first among the major legacy automakers to face a downfall? While EV competitors are achieving remarkable sales records, Volkswagen is compelled to reduce shifts, jobs and EV production in Europe due to the declining sales. All in all, the situation appears highly concerning for the Volkswagen Group. And I haven't even mentioned yet Volkswagen's ADAS system, their Advanced Driving Assistance System. Assistance system? Sounds weird. All Volkswagen's software updates, or lack thereof. In short, downloads often didn't work, 
Cars were left without any working software, which meant they were totally dead and had to be towed to the nearest Volkswagen dealership, where it took just a mere nine hours in a workshop to update it to version 3. But leaving that aside, there are just so many problems for Volkswagen to solve, and it's difficult to see how they are going to get through this in one piece. Volkswagen's future. Previous Volkswagen CEO Herbert Diess clearly saw the writing on the wall. He was fully aware of not only Tesla's enormous lead in the EV space and the disruption it was causing in the ice world, but he may have also understood that BYD and other Chinese manufacturers could just add a 20% markup to their vehicles and still be around half the cost of an equivalent EV in Europe. This should have been alarm bells for Volkswagen and other worldwide manufacturers. The fact that Chinese competitors are producing better, cheaper electric cars than most traditional car companies. This has been a slow motion car crash in the making for years now, at least to those paying attention. Herbert Dees could see this coming, anyone following the EV trend could see this coming, and I think Alex Voigt, who you should most certainly follow on Twitter, said it best. There was a time, 10 years ago, when I talked to Volkswagen managers that there might be a chance for them to wake up, but greed, arrogance and denial led to what we see today. It is a sad day to see all my negative predictions come true. Well, there we go. What do you see happening for Volkswagen? Will they turn their Titanic in time or are they already going down? I'd love to hear your thoughts and if I've got anything wrong, let me know that too. Oh, and do check out these other Volkswagen-related videos. I'm Will, this is the Tesla Jigsaw. Thank you so much for watching.